since uh, the uh, late 60s, I guess, uh, emerging evidence were starting to confirming that uh, birds uh, had shared like a lots of uh, features in common with dinosaurs. And then eventually that got investigated uh, to figure out the evolutionary link. So basically now we know the birds are one group of dinosaurs, one of the, the, the only lucky ones that didn't die out during the asteroid catastrophe 66 million years ago. Uh, but there are so there are lots of uncertainties of how these uh, sort of link evolved. We've now thankfully documented with lots of new features in the fossil records. We now have evidence of feathers, for example, from dinosaurs from China. But there are like other non tangible evidence which are more difficult to figure out. So we know for certain that, of course, there is a group of dinosaurs that is more blooded, which is birds, because you know they do. That's what they do, and we know, of course, that they derive from the sort of very big reptilian group, which is the dinosaurs. But we know that reptiles are not warm blooded, so the ancestrally must have been uh, dinosaurs, probably at least ancestrally, uh, must have been cold blooded. So when did this change happen? <laughs> Uh, of course, we know uh, from modern biology that if something is able, <laughs> capable of living in the Arctic or you know very cold regions, it means they must have some ways of heating up. And one of the, the most important way of heating up is, of course, with your own metabolism, with your own biology. We can figure out a lot about their biology, how active they were, uh, maybe if they were more social, because we know that animals tend to be more social, so lots of things about the reproduction. Many, many, many components that will uh, help us understanding a little bit more about how these ecosystems were functioning, because of course we know that ecosystems which are dominated by cold-blooded animals are quite different from the ones dominated by warm-blooded animals.